So, in the new year, we started the journey to understand the mind, and I compared the mind with the three lanes of the highways. The lane number one, where we get the unwanted, unwelcome thoughts all the time, all the time. The moment you wake up in the morning until we sleep. Dream is a different state and sleep is a different state. So we are only talking about the waking state. And the lane number two, where we receive the knowledge or where we can put the knowledge. So the same mind becomes an intellect. You are listening to me and so one part of the mind uses these sentences to understand so obviously that receiving the knowledge and that happens all the time i'm going to the restroom i'm going to the kitchen i'm going to eat something now i'm going to sleep this is all knowledge after the knowledge we take an action and when the knowledge is fully realized if it is right everything is good in life so these three lanes constantly are in, or you can say interact, they are interrelated and they are also independent. Lane is also independent and they are interconnected. Example, you are listening to me and still you have unwanted thoughts in your mind. So if I'm not aware of the lane number one, so what happens? The lane number one carries with it the past impressions, lot of dualities, likes and dislikes and confusion. And it passes on to the lane number two and the intellect says, yes, you are right. And the moment you say you are right, you are already in a delusion. One example, fire station irritates John. That is lane number one. So when I spoke about it, the lane number one of the John recalled that craziness of the mind. And it is ready to become crazy. Provided the lane number two says it has nothing to do with me. And it all matters with awareness. That I am aware, I do not allow the knowledge to be overpowered by the late number one. And if that happens, we start working on the mind. We start working on the mind my friends and that is why i asked you a question <clears throat> and you all started laughing who sends you the email sms to be angry and upset when they meet you can i live in that awareness all the time I'm living in the lane number two all the time. Let lane number one has millions of unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. It's not going to disturb you at all. You are free from today. <laughs> are you getting it? Say yes. For that, we have to undertake a journey. And that is why Buddha said, we discussed about it, that is why the Buddha said, don't believe me. Don't listen to the people who says, believe me. Unless you do the self-inquiry, and the self-inquiry will be done by the lane number two. The moment anyone says to me that that guy is crazy, I 
I look at the person and feel that if I go opposite, he will be offended. I keep quiet, but I tell my mind, no, this is his opinion, not mine. Why should I agree with him? Why? What is the reason? But if the lay number one has created the habit of blaming and complaining, I will accept immediately. I will believe it. And that makes us crazy in our life. And that creates a lot of conflict and confusion. We lose our awareness. We get impulsive. We get emotional. We get irritated. Don't blindly believe what I say. You know, normally, oh, well, who is Buddha? Oh, Buddha was a great master, enlightened. He left everything. Uh, he was a great prince. No, we have to understand this part, what he said. Don't believe what I say. Don't believe me because others convince you of my words. Don't believe anything that you see, read or hear whether of authority, religious teachers, or the text. Unless you do the self-inquiry. So I have told many a times, Eastern wisdom says, believe pending inquiry. Whether you follow, I have a lot of stress, pending inquiry. So we leave the other Pending inquiry, we leave it. No, why don't you understand? I have a lot of stress because of my honey. Ah, so your honey is responsible for your stress. So why you got married? You know, at those those were the different days. A couple of years back, we were soulmate. Oh, who told you? Mind one, lane number one, and now the same lane number one says you that now he makes me crazy or she makes me crazy. So we have lost awareness. We are living in ignorance. How can we live a happy life? Think. Think. So we follow the same approach when the Buddha says, no, belief pending inquiry is very important. So, where, so what we say that peace is your essential nature pending inquiry. Until you reach there, realize that peace, continue inquiry. So in that sense, the entire journey of the Eastern wisdom has nothing to do with religion, cult, dogma, belief. It has nothing to do. Are you ready? If you are ready, you are ready for an inquiry, you are a seeker. Otherwise, what will happen? You will continue to listen to this beer guy. You know, he seems to be a good guy, so let you know. He doesn't attack anyone, so let him continue to listen. Nothing will happen unless you do the inquiry. You are hungry, you have to eat food. You cannot force me to eat food to meet your hunger. You have to go to restroom by yourself. You cannot force me. No, no, you do this work and so that I'll be free. I will empty the blood. You have to sleep yourself. You have to eat your food. Same way, you have to make an inquiry. So what uh, I remember an interesting... Oh, did I tell you about baby monkey and... Uh, huh? Did I talk about it? Baby monkey and uh, uh, baby cat? So you see, the, on those days, more than uh, 3,000 years back, they have to give some example, a metaphor. So they said, uh, you have to work like a baby monkey. You have not to remain lazy, sleeping like a baby cat. What the baby mother does? Baby mother catches on, his, on the neck of the baby cat and moves from one place to the other. So the baby cat remains lazy. No inquiry. Well, you see, the examples are so beautiful. But the baby monkey keeps on holding the back of the mom. 
Otherwise, he will not learn anything. He will not move from one place to the other. He is ignorant. So he keeps on holding the back of the monkey mother until he starts learning the art of living. That is the job of a seeker. Now, I'm not saying you have to keep holding me, you know. I'll be upset. <laughs> so that you have to hold the knowledge part. That is the message. Well, those masters were, so we have understood that. So self-inquiry based on many factors. I am in search of the truth and the real self, or you can say the peace and happiness, which uh, every master claims is your essential nature. So that truth cannot be falsified. It cannot be destroyed. It is independent of any master, any teacher, any book, any time, any location. So it means it is present in all the location. It, it is present in all the situation. Lane number one over powers, I forget it. How simple is the journey? How simple is it? So because the mind is not able to realize this fact, and that is why we have a master and a disciple tradition. That is why the teacher has to speak differently based on the group, based on the temperament. So truth is existence, means peace is existence, love is existence. That is existence. So what it means? I do not love anybody because the love manifests through me. I am not in peace, I am peace. I am not in happiness, I am happiness. If the sugar, if you make the sugar to speak, what is your nature, sweetness of a sugar, sweetness? Same way, what is our nature? The nature of our real self is nothing but the peace and happiness. So now, so did you, did you, did you prick your intellect? What did you say? The peace is your essential nature. So what is non-essential nature? Stress and suffering. I told you, belief pending inquiry. I have not to believe. I have to go for after it. I have to inquire. So I stop inquiry. You told me peace is your essential nature and I'm living in stress. So I told you, did you inquire? Did you contemplate? Did you reflect on it? So when you don't reflect on it, baby monkey, not baby cat. Baby monkey makes you a seeker, baby cat, non-seeker. So that is the so that is the answer. Who can discover this permanent peace and happiness in our in the life? So what is an obstacle? Be logical. You ask question. Intellect means you know. Let me ask the questions to my mind. Also, I agree with you. But uh, but question is that when peace and happiness are my essential nature, you told me it is my essential nature, so I should not have been in stress. I should not grieve. I should not be in pain. My experience contradicts what you said. Do you agree? Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't open the wounds, you know, we all have been suffering since ages. <laughs> One suffers from even the fire station that is inert. <laughs> My friend, what to say about others? <laughs> do, do you see that? 
So here the master says it is because the mind is impure. No, but what it has to do with impurity when peace and happiness are my essential nature? So our master says there is a real self. The impure mind is superimposed over the real self. And that, what is that impure mind? All the crazy stuff, unwanted, unwelcome thoughts, idea of blaming and complaining others and the grief and claiming that I am worthy of suffering. All these thoughts and wrong notions keeps covering, veiling the real self. So I have to make the mind impure. We need the purity of the mind. How do you prove it? Do you have a desire? Do you have an attachment? Do you have a delusion? Are you, do you get upset? Same question, bring the same question again. Who told you, who sent you an email or SMS and called you that when I meet you, you get upset over me? You react against me, you become angry over me. Who said? Now I become, so who is this I? That is what the impure mind is. I'm explaining in a logical fashion. Every step. So that once you have an understanding in the lane number two, the lane number one is not going to overpower you. <clears throat> so that is the impure mind. <clears throat> so this mind, the impure mind, wails over the real self. We all are essentially one pure consciousness. Here we are six people, you are saying we all are one consciousness. So there is a confusion in the mind. And confusion is the result of the impurity of the mind. So we have to once we purify the mind, but how to purify the mind now? So go on asking, that is the way all the texts of the Eastern wisdom were written. But in those days, we, uh, you know, the people have, today also people have different level of awareness different level of understanding. I don't want to go into IQ. So different level of awareness, different ways of understanding. So every master has taught differently the same principle. Some people talked about the God, some people talked about the do's and don'ts. And the highest teaching is to follow the intellect, do the inquiry. It is the highest journey in the Eastern wisdom. Are you ready for a self-inquiry? Then you have to be a seeker. You have to be a seeker. So before I uh, pick up this uh, topic of who is a qualified seeker, in one way we all are qualified seekers, but we are not aware of what we should be doing in our life. I made two opposite statements and understand it. That and tell me. Example, I'm going to kitchen to have a cup of tea. This sentence contains a knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the object. What is the object? First object is the kitchen and second is the tea. Clear? In that sentence, second factor is the I. I, cup in the kitchen, two factors. And third is the result. I have a desire to drink the cup of tea, so I will take a cup of tea. So since morning when we wake up, my friends, we follow the same knowledge all the time. You wake up in the morning, oh, 
non-verbally, you know you are going to the restroom, you are going to take a shower. I take a shower around 5 a.m. I don't know about you. You all are beautiful, so you need not to take showers. <laughs> so, so you see that every every statement, every thought is a product of knowledge, and every every thought contains these three factors: subject, object, and the knowledge. Subject, object, and the result. Think in this way. Going to the restroom, I know the result. Going to the kitchen, I know the result. I'm going to the bedroom, I know the result. I'm sitting before the computer, I know. It's an automatic. It's an automatic. Are you getting it? So the mind automatically connects subject I with the kitchen object and the result. I can get a tea in the kitchen, not in the restroom, not in the bedroom. Every step, every sentence contains the three. So, and the mind automatically connects. Connect I with the kitchen, so I have to go there. I with the tea, I will relieve myself. Oh, stimulant. What are these three factors in becoming a seeker? If you are clear, half the journey is done. So I am capable. I know I have an ability. I am qualified to walk to the kitchen. And second factor that I know what the kitchen looks like. I know the different objects in the kitchen. I know where the tea leaves are lying. Clear? So in order to be a seeker, I have to become a qualified seeker. Apply the same logic. So when a person is qualified seeker, here the qualification is that I should be able to know like in the kitchen, where are the tea leaves, where is the coffee, same way. What is real and what is false, I must know. If I don't know, how, how can I undertake the journey? Second factor is the subject matter. What is the subject matter? Subject matter is who am I? What is real self, what is false self? What is matter? What is consciousness? What is mind? What is intellect? How the mind takes, makes me, uh, how the, um, what the impure mind is, what the pure mind is. So unless I have a clarity, I can use the same knowledge at every moment in my life to start the journey. Subject matter. Who am I? What is the world outside? And what is the nature of the world? Does any situation outside or a person outside or a time outside or a condition outside is responsible for my suffering or not? I must be 100% clear. If there is no clarity, it means there is a confusion. If there is a confusion, I have a wrong notion. So if I have a wrong notion, that causes the impure, mind impure. And we continue to live our life with that impurity which contains the anxiety, confusion, grief, duality, conflict. So called after we become mature, we live with these things and we die with these things. We are taking a serious topic. We're not so serious, but understanding is required. I never think I have been upset over so many people. Let me understand what is this being upset so that I can get rid of it. I never. Every time in another group, you know, there's a, another third group. Uh, today, you know, last week I got very upset. Oh, how many times you have been upset for the last 20 years? I don't want to think. 
Why I don't want to think? Because I live with the wrong notion. What is long, wrong notion? The world makes me upset. Are you getting it? So if I do not understand, the world is not at all responsible for making me upset, anxious reaction. I told you, who sent you the email? But we, you say you are right, you look beard, old guy, so that's why I'm listening to you, but I'm not going to change my thing, thought process. Don't change. Live in stress. So that is the subject matter. But we also must know the result. So these three factors, I should, as a person, I should be a qualified seeker. The second is the subject matter. To, to which subject I should be qualified? I must know where, who am I, where is the nature of the world, what is the existence, and I must know the result before I undertake the journey. So our master says, it will bring an end to the suffering once and for all. You are aware of the suffering. Because you have been suffering. That's why you are attending the session. So the mind keeps that reserved line. First is this, an awakening to permanent peace and happiness, love and wisdom. So we have three factors. I, qualified seeker. Second factor is the subject matter. Third is the result. So when I remember the result, recall the result, it motivates my mind. Does it motivate you? Or you simply say this weird guys, keep on talking, you know. It doesn't make a sense, but still I like, that's why I'm attending the session. Or does it really inspires you. I have to keep my focus how it can bring an end to the suffering. So I is connected to the result. The way I'm going to take a cup of tea, so definitely you are going to the kitchen. I is connected to the result also. We don't connect it, so that's why we have a problem. Then connect I with the subject matter. What I'm thinking about myself at this moment and the way I have been thinking over the years has resulted in a lot of conflict and confusion in my relationship at home, in my professional life, in my social life. The way my mind keeps on thinking have kept the wrong notions which causes a lot of suffering. So I must make it clear. So the second connection, I with the subject matter. And the third connection, the subject matter with the result. We connect. We have these three connect three factors and the three connections all the time, then only we get the result of a thought, I'm going to the kitchen to have a cup of tea. So the entire process, you go prepare a cup of tea and drink tea and thought is gone. No wandering. Your mind is not wandering. I have to take a cup of tea or I do not need to take a cup of tea. Going to the restroom, thought is finished. You empty the bladder. Same way. So what the master is saying is saying that can I educate my mind to follow the same thought process that we have been doing in other activities. Unless we clearly understand these three factors with the three connections. So the, all the four things are known as the four connections in the Eastern wisdom. Eastern wisdom never begins clearly without clarity. If you do not, if you do not follow these four connections. I thought in the new year, I should start from the very beginning so that your mind will pick up if you do not. Initially, I left those things. 
I, because people are, uh, which say they, I want an instant result. So instant result is not there in the journey of the life. So this is, yes, this is. So let us start our practice today. We will continue with the four connections in our next lesson. Eyes are closed. Make a comfortable position of the body. And uh, so when I say, you know, every sentence has all these factors. Make the position of the body comfortable, you see a complete. So you experience, are you comfortable with the position of the body or within a minute you want to move the position of the body and continue doing so then in the entire practice. You're not doing it clearly. No, no, but you are not explaining. I have already explained. You have to follow the journey like a baby monkey. You are holding on to the knowledge inside your head. Eyes are closed gently, and then I say, move the mind on the neck joint. Understand? So moving the mind, the mind is already on the neck joint. You simply become aware the moment I say it. And there you experience the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. You slip from the physical matter. What is the physical matter? The neck joint. Two, a mental experience of sensation, comfort, and steadiness. So what happens? You are moving the mind with and by being comfortable. So don't bring in any scientific principles. They do not work. They will talk of the physiological comfort, biochemical comfort, and they will, they will try to make your mind run outside. We are moving the mind inside. The science cannot come here. Move the mind on the shoulder joints, be there. Feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. Sensation, normal. Comfort, yes. Steadiness, yes. Move the mind on the hip joint, be there. Feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. This is what we are doing. We are trying to check the mind. That mind, are you moving to the lane number two or you still remain in the lane number one? And your mind hears, listens to the instructions, 100% translates into an experience and you are comfortable. That is the power of the knowledge. And now as we understand Lane number one has unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. They come and they go. They sometimes they stay, sometimes they push you. You are not doing anything. Why you are in lane number two? Where is the lane number two intellect? You know, you are aware that unwanted, unwelcome thoughts are coming. The way you are aware, driving on the highways in a particular lane, you know. The others are also driving on different lanes. They do not disturb you. How should it disturb you? Unwanted and welcome thoughts are in the lane number one of the mind. They should not. Let any crazy thought come. Let any good thought come. One guy told me, because he's a great businessman, a millionaire, he has been my client, and he said, if I get a good idea about the business, should I keep on thinking? No. It is unwanted when you are practicing meditation. It will result into attachment. You will never be able to succeed. So whether the good and the bad thoughts. So what happens when the lane number one and the two are clearly understood, then the lane number three is the result, a realization that how easy it is to be comfortable and carefree, not only in the meditation journey, but all the time. Why it does not happen?
you bring the emotional baggage meeting a person from the lane number one. You are not able to differentiate. You talk to them and you are upset and get into anxiety. So we have many tools. One of them I told you is the replace the thought, which is a mantra. Sarve bhavantu sukhina. So lane number two is saying, let everyone be happy. Sarve bhavantu sukhina. You should remember it by heart and you should be repeating during the day as many times as possible. Sarve bhavantu sukhina. Let everyone be happy. Lay number one, unwanted, unwelcome thoughts, they are continuing. You are not, you are not participating there. Lay number two, you are replacing, you are not replacing, you are just creating another thought process. Let everyone be happy. Everyone be happy, why? Because we want to continuously stay in the lay number two. We are taking a silent action over the lane number one. Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Santu Niramaya Let everyone be in the state of well-being. When everyone is in the state of the well-being, even even if you get upset, but the other is in the state of the well-being, what is going to happen? But if you are in the state of the well-being, then what happens? Sarve bhadrani pashyantu Sarve bhadrani pashyantu Sarve bhadrani pashyantu it means everyone should be blessed. Why? The way I am a part of the entire existence, the same way others are also the part of the same existence. So the greatest factor, common factor, is that we both are the part of the existence. I have no birthright to react and to blame and complain anymore. You see that? So that thought contains the knowledge of the existence, common existence. We breathe the same air, we live on the same earth planet, we live, we live with the same factors of the food that cons consist of the body. We have the same blood. No, but there is a problem. We will solve the problem. Ma kaschid dukkha bhagu bhavit. Ma kaschid dukkha bhagu bhavit. None should suffer from misery in the world. Vaivisidu. Lane number two should realize that these miseries caused by the ignorance. Let us go for a, a practice, an active practice bring, appears to bring the result very fast. But uh, they do not stay for long. But even, even that is good in learning process. So you are looking inside the forehead and you start breathing quick and short from both the nostrils into the chest. There should be an expansion and contraction of the chest.
Just continue. Even the mind objects. Which mind objects? Lane number one. You persist. You maintain that. No, I'm going to do it. And stop it. How many times the mind created and resistance to stop the breathing is nothing but the impurity of the mind. One way to understand. But now you start inhaling deep, silent and slow. Inhalation should be completely silent. Belly into the rib case up to the throat. But while breathing out, Lips remain together, you're breathing out from the nostril and make the humming sound louder, deeper, long. So the next breath again you take the next breath deep silent and slow pay attention inhalation is totally deep silent and slow so you are able to maintain your awareness of the lane too that is if i use the word that is the trick to keep the mind on the lane number two all the time and while doing the humming sound you are dissolving the lane number one you're not at all concerned, not participating. Mm. If you are practicing with understanding clarity, that is what we practice if I say you are going to the kitchen to prepare a cup of tea. Basically you are practicing. Action means the practice. But you have a clarity of understanding. Where the tea leaves are there, where the gas tube is there, where the bowl is there. Same way. I hope you are doing this practice this week. What is going to happen? You will recognize that the rate of your breath per minute drops down. From 18, 20 breaths to only 6 or 7 breaths a minute. And that is a great achievement. To become a qualified seeker. I'll tell you how. Mm.
nothing become aware of the natural breath that is going in and out. So you see, first point of awareness, sensation, relaxation and stillness is in the body. You may have a new experiences in and around the head, a kind of self-absorption. Good, very good. And now in that state, you are looking at the breath, means what you know the breath is going in and out. You do not change it. Good. And now when the breath goes in, just drop like a drop of water. Om Shanti mentally, non-verbally. When the breath returns, Om Shanti, with a knowledge. What is the knowledge? Om is the real self. Shanti is the peace. So the mind continues to live in the lane number two. It does not participate at all of what is happening in the lane number one. The mind jumps to the lane number three. It results into a, an experience that you normally share with me. Everything is clear. Continue. And do nothing, remain as you are in the state of doing nothing. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. You see, I speak three times, and Shanti is also spoken three times. Why? There are three types of this suffering. We bring an end to the three kinds of suffering, a reminder. Shanti, Shanti. Om means realization of that true nature brings an end to the three types of this suffering. That is why we, we don't speak about the suffering. We say, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms, know your experiences. Bring the hands down, we'll share our experiences. How are you, Charlie? 
Hello, I'm, I'm good. good. Um, my mind, mind, mind on track, track number one was very busy, busy today, today. Um, but when, when I focused, focused on, on track, track number two, two uh, I, could I could feel myself, myself coming in, in and then, and then going, going out again, again and then coming, coming in and then going, going out. And, and at, at the, the end, end of the, the um, meditation, meditation, I felt more, more like an observer. Yes. You have to answer the question, everyone, that why I am attracted to the lane number one. That has become our nature, our attitude, our behavior. And that is why I just gave this metaphor that every time the lane number one is busy, let me switch on to the lane number two, even during the day. When the mind is working inside you, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in the restroom, in the living room, everywhere, with people, with relations, that causes more problem. So I hope everyone will be working. How are you, Sophie? Hello, I feel good. I think my mind wants to block out every sound from the outside. Okay. Lane number one. What? Lane number one. Yeah, those are not for one or nothing. Yeah. But I was not. It was blocking also listening to you. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It was blocking my instructions also? Yeah, yeah the, it's the first, first part. part. But, but then, then when, when we start, start you, know, you know, working, working on, on the breath, breath and then... No, no even, even the mantra, the mantra so that was, yeah. yeah. So what is the understanding that when I say all the three lanes are independent and interconnected? So we are not participating with the lane number one. It says, block it, I say, thank you. I follow the instructions. So sometime due to the past impression, it triggers, it creates a thought process. And then it struggles, then it reacts. So if we dissolve that reaction, we how to dissolve? I'm not participating. So that will take you deeper. But in the end, you were calm and relaxed. So how are yeah, yeah. you, John? Hey, Gary, hey, Gary, I'm, I'm fine. fine. I, I find it difficult, difficult with the, the humming, humming set. set. Being, Being able, able to, to hold, hold the, the humming sound, sound for more than two, two or three, three seconds. seconds. Not holding. That's right. That's right. You're not holding it. Just take a deep breath. Check that you are breathing into the belly then into the rib case, and now without stopping, start the humming sound. <laughs> so what is happening? Again, the lane number one comes silently. It creates a pattern. No, 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 I have to hold the breath. No, you have not to hold the breath. So you see, very small fractional thoughts, they enter into the mind, they change the direction. That is what the wrong notion, that is what we discussed today. So the knowledge has to be clearly absorbed, means lane number two. And even if the lane number two, I cannot do it, let me continue. So that overrules. Subtle process, but not very deep. But in the end, you were relaxed? Yeah. yeah. Good. How are you, Anne? I unmuted. I can unmute, but I cannot... No, I can mute, but I cannot unmute. Okay. okay. Here, Here we, we go. go. Yes, I... I... I felt I, felt I became, became very, very, very quiet. Very quiet. Uh, 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 
So, so why, why is it you block, block out, out? I think, I think from, from time, time to time, time I block, block out, out your speech. speech. <laughs> yeah, but, but that is okay. Now understand the same process with reference to this metaphor, lay number one, two. Lay number two is realized, you have understood it, you are jumping into the lay number three. But the lay number three still have the past impressions. It still triggers the thoughts, but you are too far. It doesn't disturb you. You don't own them. And that is the result of the quietness. Quietness does not mean that you don't feel any sensation, you don't feel any sound. So the, my mouse also doesn't feel any sound. So what is the what is the difference between me as a human being and the mouse? Does the mouse listen to any sound? Does the mouse feel any sensation? I'm a conscious being. I'm talking to everyone. Do you understand that point? Sometime you are a you are in a mob, and what happens? You are in a mall, but your mind is so much stressed that you feel in a mob. In a mall also with thousands of the people, you are still alone. But that is the case of the stress. Here it is the case of quietness. Consciously achieved. How are you meet? I, I, I feel, feel peace. peace. You feel I peace very peaceful. Good. Uh, I, feel I feel kind, kind of, of relieved, relieved of something. Really, very good. Yeah, uh, relieved of the lane number one. Mm. They will continue until we completely transform the mind. But we have found the way that we are not participating. I am driving on the always in the lane number two. The lane number one says I should get upset over a person. So I ask, you know, did you get a message that you should be upset? That is an understanding. That is a knowledge. And we do mostly with our near and dear ones. <laughs> that is all for today. Thank you very much. We'll meet again. I'm going to send you this file. I have one more session.